One of the many benefits of attending baseball games at Dietrich Park is you never know who you're likely to meet. You shouldn't live in the past. It's dangerous. But to visit it is a, just a, a wonderful experience. Um, I'm very fortunate to be able to sit beside somebody with that kind of knowledge. Um, and not so much knowledge about pitching, just knowledge about how to be a pro. And I think I really um, took to a lot of the way he carried himself and the way he had passion for preparing for a game. And um, I mean, I really have a funny story about him. He, you know, uh, I, I lockered beside him uh, four years I was there. I think that was kind of not by choice, just because nobody else wanted a locker beside him because he was not the most friendliest guy on a daily basis. But um, you know, having the bad knees and you know getting it going every night. But I remember pitching a game and um, he. Uh, I started the first inning and I, had, I worked out of a bases loaded, one out situation and, uh, and I'd, I was complaining about the weather and the umpire and the mound and just wasn't a good start, you know, and he didn't say a word, he just, he just hauled off and hit me right in the middle of my chest, you know, with his fist and he just said, hey, we need you out there today for seven innings, yeah. let's go. And I just, it woke me up and I, I, I want to say I put up six or seven shutout innings after that. Right, right. And I'd never been hit like that, you know, and it wasn't, he wasn't being mean, he was just basically letting me know, you need to shut your mouth and, and get back to business. So um, that was the kind of thing that you get on the bench, you know, and, uh, you know, and coming from Pudge, it was kind of uh, meaningful. Any story with Harry, though, um, uh, me and my wife at the time walked into uh, his restaurant, mm -hmm. and he had a big round table there in the front corner uh, of the restaurant, and I walk in, and I think I'd pitched that night, and you know, when you have a good game, you want to go out and eat dinner or whatever. And I walked in, and Harry saw me walk in, and, you know, he was, hey, Hibby, come on over, you know. <laughs> have a seat, you know. And there was like ten chairs at the table, you know. Well, Harry, I mean, you had to sit and talk for two hours before you even ordered food. Yeah. So, um, you know, we sat there, and it was just fun listening to Harry, you know, telling stories. And, and he, he asked more stories about me and, and, and situations or in the game or, or, or something that had happened, but um, that was probably the most enlightening thing that I, I remember about him. One of the favorite calls that I ever heard him say was, um, hey, you know, Steve, six of my best friends just walked in and they're all named Bud. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, he was, uh, it, it was funny. Uh, the, the other thing that was awesome about Harry was um, once in a while the game wouldn't be on TV and um, so it'd be, he'd be on the radio and I remember pitching the game, eighth inning, I leave the game, the reliever comes in, you know, and we're leading by two runs and it's the bottom of the ninth, or top of the ninth and, and I'm sitting in the clubhouse listening over the, 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 the piped in sound, right? And uh, I mean, here you go, and the pitch, there's a drive, it might be. Sandberg makes the catch. And I'm like, what? I mean, I'm like running outside to see if it's a homer, and there, there, you know, there's Sandberg making the catch on the infield. Yeah, yeah. And it was like every ball that the guy would hit seemed like it was going to be a homer. Yeah, yeah. And then he'd be like, you know, the second baseman yeah, makes the yeah. catch. I'm like, oh. <laughs> it was nerve wracking to listen to it on the radio. You're the best. This was really fun. <laughs> and, and you should go on stage with this Harry Carey. <laughs>